In this tutorial, I'm going to try to give you a whistle stop tour of layer blending within X Lights. So, specifically, I'm going to be covering this drop down box within the layer blending dialog. But before we can move on to that, we need to understand what X Lights is doing when we're talking about multiple layers. Now, for anybody who's not aware, any prop on X Lights by default comes with one layer. If we right click, we can insert as many new layers as we desire to this particular prop. So you can see here, I've created three layers on this all snowflake set of props. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using a mega tree. Now, when we have multiple layers, X lights interprets these layers in a certain way. And what it does, it looks at the bottom layer and it applies that effect to the prop. So in this case, we've got a simple spiral effect, a green spiral on the lower most layer of this mega tree. On the next layer up, I've got another simple spiral in red. So what will happen is if we put these together, which I've done in this case, oh, I need to turn that movement off. Okay, so we've got these two effects and we put them together above each other. We now see that both are rendered on the mega tree. But what we must understand is this layer is obliterating any pixels that intersect on this layer. And we can see this. If we look wherever there is a crossover, you can see the red pixels are dominant because it is the red layer that is on top. Once we have done this, we can apply movement effects. And you can see there the green layer is moving behind the red. We can do the same and we can start, you know, getting nice motions. Now, this is just using a simple spiral, but you can imagine using more complex effects, how this could be, you know, come some, create some quite professional effects. And if I'm honest, if you're going to want to try and achieve the effects that the pros are getting, you need to be using layer blending. Now, we have not been really using any of the layer blending effects. These have all just been set to normal. So literally, as we said, the top layer was obliterating the layer below. This is where this dialog comes in. This will allow us to adjust how these two layers or multiple layers, yeah, we're not just limited to two, how they interact with each other. So to do this, I'm going to show you two more layers. I've got a simple text layer with the words hello with white text on a black background, just scrolling up the screen. And then I've got just your generic butterfly effect. So let's bring these together. Just make sure that they are aligned. And we'll move back to that normal layer blending. So what is happening? X lights is rendering the butterfly effect. Then it's overwriting anything that is on the layer one with the content. So we can see the word hello coming up the screen. But let's now go through the different layer blending effects. Effect one. What we're seeing to X lights now is I don't care what the other effects are. This is the important one. So forget what is below. Just show me this layer. And that is what we're getting. We're just getting the word hello. The next is the reverse of this. We're saying ignore me, ignore my layer and show me the other layer. And we see the butterfly effect. Next, one is mask. What we say now is wherever there are pixels illuminated on this layer, don't illuminate them on the lower layer. So mask them away. So we effectively, we're almost cutting a hole in that butterfly effect. So what was our white text now appears as black text because they're being cut from 
the butterfly. This one won't make as much sense in this context, but to his mask is doing the reverse. It's saying wherever there are illuminated pixels here, don't allow them to show through on here. Now, because every pixel is illuminated on a butterfly effect, this doesn't actually make much, much sense. So if I was to say, use this one as an example instead, here, I've got white on a black background. If I was to do that same effect of to his mask on here, you see it is working. It's punching that hole in the butterfly effect on the top layer. Let's move on. One is unmask. So now it's, we're doing the reverse. So rather than punching a hole through the butterfly, it's saying wherever there are pixels illuminated in this layer, allow the lower layer to show through. So you can see, we, rather than just plain white text, we have got text with a butterfly effect within them. And we've got a similar problem now with the two is unmask. For that, I need to come to this one. And you see it's doing the reverse. Two is unmask is now allowing the butterfly effect to show through on the white area of the below. Now, these are the ones that I tend to use. They, they do a very similar thing to the other masks, but these are written in more in a way that video editing tools would do masking. So it's to do with how black and white is handled on the mask, but I wouldn't worry about that too much, but just tend to use this one, but we'll see how the effect is. So we'll go one is true and mask. You can see it does the similar effect to the standard mask and it's showing the layer below. Two is true on mask, and you can see how it differs now. You remember the two is unmask, we lost, we just obliterated with white, at least with the true on mask, it at least honors the white pixels on that above layer, that layer one. So this is why true on mask is sometimes the better option. Let's move down. One reveals two. Now, this doesn't actually make much sense in the context we've got here. So let's have a look at the description. What it's basically saying is effect one reveals effect two. So we want something more like this. It actually says superimpose. So this is this has more context when you're using more than two layers. But in this case, it is just doing exactly the same as if we use the normal render style. And then two reveals one, yeah, nothing, because this one is now doing the reversed. So this is now obliterating the top layer. Now we get into some more ones that can be a little bit tricky, shadow on one and two. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see if we can actually decipher what is going on with here. But basically, it, it's altering the brightness and saturation of the layer below. So if we go shadow on layer one, turns this back to normal. You can see something here coming up. You can see the text coming up here but it's causing the thing to inter interact. So it maybe make more sense if I change this now to a simple on effect. So now you can see, I'll turn that to another color. The blue would be better. So you can see what is happening is this white text is actually causing a color shift, a U shift in the layer below. So this is blue. This was a, a, was a white text layer, but when it casts a shadow on here, it's causing the 
you to shift. So in this case, it's changing the blue to purple in this case. And I assume if we change the color of the text, that shift would be slightly different as you can see. Yeah, so we can barely see it now because the colors are close. But as we move away, we can see a different type of interaction between the two layers. Now we've got the reverse shadow two on one. And now we're seeing all that's happening is we're ending up with blue text, but if we were to change this color, we'd probably get a different interaction. But these are a little bit of trial and error. And if I've got to be honest, I very rarely use this shadow effect. Now let's look at the layered effect. Now the description on this one is effect one only shows in black regions of effect two. So if we look at this, this layer here, the black region is the outer area and it's white in the middle. So if we go here, layered, that is what we expect you to see. So we can see that the lower layer is now obliterating that top layer. And the black region of that layer is allowing the other layer to show through. Now we start getting onto average. Now this is where it's confusing because the average is working almost like a paint box rather than working with light. So we'll jump onto these two effects. So here, if I go normal, I've just got a red and a blue and a red layer. Now I've put them together, as we would expect with the normal render style, the blue layer is completely obliterating the red. However, if we put the average, it averages out those. So it mixes these two pixels like you're mixing them on a color palette. So blue and red tend to make a purple color. So that is the average. When we come along, need to now cover the bottom top. This is nice and simple. Bottom top just says, Show me the top half of one and the bottom half of another. So we see the we see the bottom the top half is layer two, the bottom half is layer one. So we can split the layer into two parts. Might make more sense if I do it on this uh, text one. Okay, so you can see the green layer is occupying the top part of the prop and the text layer is occupying the bottom of the prop. Same with left, right. We split the prop into two halves and one effect is on the left, one effect is on the right. Additive. Now, this is where, again, colors start getting mixed together. So we're saying, Add this, mix this color with this color. But you can see that the way it mixes is slightly different to that average effect. Yeah, we tend to lose a quite a bit of saturation using the average, but the additive, yeah, red and blue make purple. And if we say red and green, yeah, makes a yellow. So it's like mixing a color palette. Now, this is very simple on a, a simple on effect, but you imagine on something like a butterfly, we can move the shift a lot of the colors. So you can see now what was a normal butterfly. When we apply that effect, we can shift the colors and make a different type of palette. Next one is subtractive. Very similar, but here it's subtracting some of the colors from the top layer, from the bottom layer. So you end up with a different color shift. Max and min. 
Now, this is a, a strange one. So what we're basically doing, is, it says take the maximum pixel uh, value of each layer. So here it takes 255 red, 255 blue, 255 green. And as we know, that makes a pure white pixel. Okay, so it's actually taking the maximum value of every layer. If we was to now change these to min, we get black because it's taking the minimum value of each layer. So the minimum value of this layer is zero on the red channel and blue channel. This is zero on the green and the red channel. And this is zero on the green and the blue channel. So we end up with a completely black window, black prop, okay? But obviously if these colors were deviated slightly from that, that wouldn't be the case. We would have some colors that would work together and we they would mix together to make a slightly different color. But there you go. So that is the min. But I've got to be honest, there's some of these that I don't use so often. Now, I know that layer blending can be very complicated. And sometimes, you know, trying to explain those was quite tricky. But I hope you have a little bit more of an understanding. But what I would say with layer blending, just experiment. So uh, I'm just going to quickly show you. Just drop on a spiral effect. Increase the thickness a little bit, throw in some extra colors, put a bit of movement in there, then get that effect and paste it below on a lower layer. Flip it, then start playing with these blending styles, average, yeah, and alter some of the colors. And you start see we start getting different effects and then if we start altering the movement and the thickness and all of the different effects we start getting these different pleasurable patterns okay so i hope you enjoyed that uh if you need me to go into more depth i'm prepared to do that as well but uh, have a great day